Hello and welcome to Basket News Talks. Uh, today, here in Konas, I'm with uh, CSKA Moscow head coach Dimitri Satudis. Hello, coach. Uh, thank you for finding your time in your busy schedule. I know that it's very tight in here, but thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, thank you. Actually, I want to start from the theme that has been haunting you the whole season. Uh, the injury concerns. Uh, oh. It seems like if one player becomes healthy, another one is out. Uh, is, was there a day this season that you didn't have to bother about injuries at all? Or is it like every single day some, some uh, headache about that? Well, unfortunately, it, uh, the, the worst scenario and my, my biggest fear uh, and concern is if I see that the, on my phone uh, appears the, the name of the doctor, so something is going on, or uh, the name of my strength conditioning coach. Um, uh, yeah, we, we were not, we had a very good preseason, let's say short but good, healthy, when I say good, healthy, uh, and um, played the Super Cup, won the Super Cup, the first title of the, of the season. And uh, from there and on, even though in the Super Cup, Danny Hackett was not ready because I have to mention that the preseason was short, as I said, and having people, um, Joel Bolomboy was coming from injury four months out of basketball and he had to join the, the preseason with uh, not a full speed and uh, being cautious. Danny Hackett had a, a microsurgery in, uh, during the summer, also he was out of activity as a, as a professional and uh, Nikola Milutino was recovering from a big uh, um, uh, big time six six plus months out of basketball having a surgery but all this uh, you know we, we managed to um, to let's say um, fight it and have a normal preseason as I said we, we played the Super Cup and then after that and after the first uh, game against Milano everything starts again let's say, hitting us uh, from uh, everywhere, the injuries and uh, not being complete. Why, why I'm saying that and why I regret getting the, the opportunity from what your question is like, you know, coaches and, and uh, the management of the club, we wanted to evaluate what kind of uh, chemistry we, ha we had or we have. And since, since today, we, we were not able to see what that team ca is capable, like what are the potentials that we have and if we can meet that, that potential we have. So let's hope from now and on we're going to have less and less injury problems. Uh, what has been uh, the, the thing that you like the most so far about your team? Well, uh, uh, the, the way we work uh, and the, the way we're um, determined and uh, focus on, uh, uh, you know, fighting adversities. Um, we had a period of, um, let's say, uh, a lot of loading of certain players because the injuries leads to, as I said, um, using a different rotation of what you thought, which automatically means that uh, certain players will be more loaded and others will be out of practice or out of shape because bringing an injured player means that he needs also a certain amount of time and the games to go through, like, you know, Milutinov that he's back, um, he is now looking better and better to catch the, uh, the requested shape for, for this level, uh, you know, it will take some time. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy that uh, the players are devoted and uh, the self-awareness they have, each and every one, uh, which will bring to eventually a collective um, awareness and uh, collective, uh, you know, uh, effort, which is the, the, the question, which is the main question for, for us right now. Overall, in EuroLeague, uh, we are almost halfway through the regular season. What surprised you the most in EuroLeague so far? Well, doesn't surprise me uh, anything uh, at all. It's exactly what it is. Um, commenting also the last night's uh, results or so far, as you said, the 14th, 15th games that they were played. Um, it's it's um, it's a topic we we have to discuss. W why I'm saying that each and every game is almost looks like a final for each and every team. Like it doesn't matter who do you play against. Do you play 
for the team that is in the bottom of the standing, you're playing in a, the, the, the team that is in the middle of the standing, or you play the, the, the top teams. So, and that's not that much of a healthy. It's a good for competition to, to be out there and to compete each and every game. That's, that's for, 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 for sure. But all this happened because of the format of, uh, of the competition. And um, with all the respect, first of all, I, I, I believe that EuroLeague is the best, uh, the most quality championship out there. Uh, but teams like us or Spanish teams or you know, also other teams that they have a lot of obligations in their uh, domestic league and they do compete with um, uh, uh, teams that you know, they, they really compete on the highest level, it is that EuroCup or EuroLeague. And you have also traveling, a lot of traveling. It's not the same amount of load uh, of the players. Now, coming back to EuroLeague, the format says we, we've been 16 teams before. And 50% of the teams that were qualifying for the next phase, which is the playoffs. Now, we had two more teams we, be, we, we became 18 and still eight are qualified, which is below 50%. If we compare it with the NBA of 30 teams that they have over there and 16 are going further to the next phase, it's more than 50% and remains the same. It's even more now than 16 with that play-in tournament. Yeah, the play-in tournament is even more. That's what I, I wanted to come to. And now what we have over here is, like last year as I was talking, I was talking exactly in order not to somebody to to think that I'm trying to criticize, I'm trying to help over here, the, the sport with, which I admire and love and every, everybody loves and, and I assume that loves because you are in this, because first of all, you have a love for that and, and respect. So I was talking last year, like the eight teams that we qualified or the four teams that they go to final four, and especially the eight teams that are qualified for the, 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 the playoffs, doesn't mean that Valencia that was ninth or I don't know, Maccabi who was over there 10th or so, whatever, that that program was that bad to criticize and said, okay, they didn't qualify, so they had not a good season. So why I'm saying this is that maybe we need to, to think a little a different format. We need to add some more teams. I believe that um, there are teams out there that they can compete in the EuroLeague level, um, that they have stability and they have vision and they have um, court and they have all the required um, uh, components uh, in order to be a um, uh, a team that competes in the highest level and to probably divide it into two groups having the regular season a little bit more of a uh, you know time to make adjustments to to play different players so even if you have some defeats that doesn't cost you down stretch on what you want to do as a club this is pretty much what happened in NBA when you have 80 something games you know you can afford I may say uh, some of the injuries, some players are absent, uh, you know, you, you're going to play different rotation because you load certain players. Over here, you can't do that. <laughs> your, your, your hands are tied. You got you to play on the highest level, like back to back, back to back. You got also after that trip to your local league. Uh, and then you got to play also on the highest level over there, etc., etc. So I, I think that this is one extra reason plus the, the loaded schedule of the players, why the players are getting uh, not only in our case, because you see uh, in, in many other teams, we have a lot of injured players, like players that they're loaded and players that they give it all in, a, in, the, in the EuroLeague competition. And then in the local leagues are, I'm not saying falling, but they have a different motivation and a, and a different stamina. The stamina is not there. So, so I think we need to um, seriously think about uh, changing the, the format and, and doing something which still is going to be very uh, attractive to the fans because it is attractive. The EuroLeague competition and EuroLeague organization is, is, is great. But, uh, you know, the enemy of uh, good is the, 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 the greatest or the best. So you need to make steps in order to, to become better. So your idea is adding a couple more teams or even like four well, teams and dividing definitely. them in two groups. Definitely. Do you think it should be the same groups every year or you reshuffle it year after well, year? Well, um, that's for people that they uh, understand more. I'm just, I'm just uh, saying an idea in order to, to help. I'm just saying the facts that I share with a lot of colleagues out there. Like, it's, it's, I see it the same. Uh, there's, you know, we talk coaches. We, we talk also in our union, the, the union of coaches. We talk also with colleagues, friends with, from EuroCup, from, uh, from Champions League or from, uh, from EuroLeague, of course. And, uh, Everybody uh, says the same, you know, like uh, we, it could be um, 
from divided by region. It can be divided by the, the distance and then playing uh, all together. As also in NBA, you have four different, you have Pacific Central, what do you have at four, am I right? Four groups six, and then six, six now, yeah, all right? Six divisions, yeah. So six divisions and uh, then you're playing all less games when you go to the East Coast or West Coast, it depends. So uh, you can find the format and playing more games that requires a little, a little bit more of the games. I'm asking for more games. Yes, I'm asking for more games, but then to compensate that, the, the, the team should play a little bit less of the games in the domestic league. I'm not going against the domestic leagues. The domestic leagues are very important and uh, very respectful. Uh, but we need to find um, the, the golden uh, key because I'm telling you, players are loaded, loaded, loaded. And the, the biggest thing in this sport are the players. The, the spotlights should be on the players. The, uh, while saying that, I'm saying to have the, the best circumstances and the, and, the, and the best possibilities of developing their talent and, and giving such battles, such games, out there to the audience, and this is how we're gonna, you know, attract even more and more and more people. We gotta be united. Right now, we have four different basketballs. We have different dimensions in NCAA. We have different dimensions and rules in NBA. We have different dimensions and rules in Euroleague, and we have different dimensions and uh, actually same dimensions but different rules in FIBA in FIBA basketball. So we're going out there with a different. Idea soccer, for instance, which is the, the main sport, has the same ideas regarding if they play in Asia, if they play in, in Africa, or if they play in uh, in uh, in Europe. So our sports, I mean, uh, of course, I'm subjective subject, subjective over here, but uh, uh, I think it's a very attractive sport and very, very very you know like it happens everything within a second. So we need a little bit more. Um, be concerned of how we're going to find a way to to be together again, to be united, and to go out there with a, with one idea and and fight on the on the on the highest level and compete out there and having full arenas again back hopefully. You talked about uh, sharing your ideas with other coaches. Just a month ago, my colleague Donatas talked to Sharuna Sasikavichus, and uh, Shara said that sometimes he felt that the coaches were the last ones to be heard by your league. Uh, do you feel the same? Like sometimes oh, yeah, you're not yeah, hurt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sarah's, Sarah, Sarah was right. We were, we were talking about that. Um, major decisions have happened in, in the past without asking coaches. At least the opinion, you know? I think that we, we, we deserve to be asked. And now uh, uh, being as a union, but also before. You know, like we're, we're the ones where we're, we're taking care about everybody. This is our job. Uh, so um, at least our opinion should be uh, should be heard, uh, and there are many cases on from I don't know. Let's um, cancel the the league because of COVID. Let's do this kind of amount of days uh, off because players have asked. Let's do this. Let's do that without asking coaches. And then where's the union going? Like where 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 are we in this equation? It's not because we are egoistic. No, just because. We want to help towards the, the let's let's be heard our, our opinion. Uh, we might be it might be different, it might be the same, or we might have to add something which is going to help the uh, the competition. Yes, I, I fully agree. We we have talked that in our uh, assemblies, and that's actually odd because without any exaggeration, the coaches are the stars of the Euroleague, not the players, but the coaches are the stars, right? And if nobody asks, I see that you do not agree with me. No, <laughs> no. no. Coaches are here to, to help the, the organization and, and the players. The, the, the players are the, the stars. They, they were always been, they will always be, and they have to be. This is where the spotlight has to go. The coaches are very important fact, factor. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not trying to be over here. It's not about the modesty or something like the, 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 we're, we're important as well in, the, in this equation, like also our associates, uh, uh, the, the assistant coaches, everybody who works for the club. But uh, the players should have the, the best possible way in order to have the right treatment, the right rest, the, the right uh, traveling, the right hotels, the right meals, um, and everything in order to perform. That's the, the investment of each club, are the players. You know, and the, the players should have the supporting cast that they are over there, like all the physiotherapists, the trainers, and the coaches, that they are, everybody needs to be coached. Every need, uh, who wants to succeed eventually needs to be coached and under a system. This is a team sport. It has rules and you know certain um, certain area that you can uh, operate with 
your teammates. But uh, players should be uh, on, on, the, on the first part, but everybody, each and everyone, from the owners that they're the most important f uh, factor over there because they invest and they give the money. And then to er each and everyone who contributes in order to be spectacular, uh, this great game of basketball. Let's change the topic a bit. A uh, couple of months ago, where there were rumors about uh, possibly you joining the Greek national team. Uh, was there, there no any rumors. truth in that? There are no rumors. This is, this is, I'm not talking about rumors. This is a Greek national team show interest and it's, it's a fact. It's, okay. It was back then news, but not rumors. So was it close, you joining the Greek national it's, team? It's not about being close or, or, or far. It's, it's a certain uh, things we uh, that need to be uh, on, the, on, the, on the table and to discuss. The, the most important thing is that Mr. Lyolios, the, the, the president of uh, Greek National uh, Federation, and Mr. Vatutin, the two institutions they have met in, in Moscow, uh, besides the fact that they, they talked over the phone or via emails or whatever they, they, they did, they have met and the two institutions, they have sat on the, the table and they talked. You know, I'm, I'm, co I'm head coach of CSKs, which is a great organization, has a lot of obligation. At the same, si same time, I'm, I'm uh, very motivated and uh, honored that uh, I'm the one I'm, I'm chosen for the Greek National Federation to, to lead this uh, um, upcoming, uh, let's say, I can call it s uh, circle of, uh, of the games, either that is European uh, World uh, Championship or, or Olympic Games. Uh, but as I said, we're over here to, to find the solution or, or not to find the solution. But the, the most important thing is that they sat down and they have spoken. I think that they're going to uh, do the same in the near future. So that's still on the table, right? Um, I think so. Yeah. Uh, has it been your kind of a dream to be the head coach of the Greek national team? Well, also in, in the past, uh, uh, Mr. Vasilakopoulos, that he used to be um, the, the president of the federation, um, came to Moscow and they, they talked. Back then, it was not the, the circumstances that were weird. And uh, uh, it was the first time that the windows showed up over there, like happen or not happen. Let's clarify it's something. The, the, the offer of the Greek national uh, uh, federation is uh, not in the windows. They know that a Euroleague head coach cannot be able to uh, leave the, the team and go for and play for the windows. I hope that one day it will happen that. So but we're going to be again united uh, and all together as basketball and the leagues, the, the leagues will stop, then the players will go or we have a common agreement on when we can play games. So just to come back, the, the offer is for them. I'm sorry, during the summer, leading the leading the, the team so, so we it's need for to euro basket right for next year yeah like as i said euro basket or that's uh, after that if the team qualifies for the okay. world world champion or if the team qualifies for the olympic games etc so it's about the the summer time where already many players or a lot of players from each team and from my team uh, for our team uh, will join uh, several national teams yeah Greek national team, the last time you got medals, it was back in 2009. So that's a very quite, quite a long stretch without medals, right? Um, getting the federation, getting for big names like you, it's, it looks like a step in the right direction, right? Uh, trying to get the glory back, especially with some players like Yanis uh, still having to prove something in those FIBA courts, FIBA rules, uh, FIBA championships. Uh, I, I guess Working with Yanis is intriguing as well, right? Well, you see, I like that. But at the same time, I'm here just to put a different uh, rules. We just talked from the possibility of maybe, eventually, maybe, as I said, taking over the, the national team, going to the medal. Like we got, you know, <laughs> like from here, a possibility of taking, we already jumped to the medal. Like that's, that's not a work in my mind. You know, that's a long, long jump. Like, from the possibility of taking, it, it, it's like, um, you know, uh, a, lot of, a lot of factors should be on the, same, on the place in order to work on a, on a good way. And um, national teams are short-term uh, targets, let's say short-term uh, cycles. 
coaching wise, playing wise. Uh, you cannot compare the long term competition of Euroleague or local leagues that you're playing 10 months uh, and the two months or one month of competition. Like you go on over there, you play the no card games or you're playing the group games. So um, in between, there are a lot of components. So from taking the team until uh, going to the medal is, uh, is, is uh, probably 100 years ahead. So uh, we need to think about other things like regarding Yanis, um, he already proved that he can play ball and in the highest level. And we, we, we're proud that uh, Yanis is competing and at the same time uh, competing on the highest level. He is uh, among the best, uh, the best of the best. And um, he still uh, has a desire, a wish to help the national team uh, uh, perform and him and his brothers and everybody. Um, you mentioned something which is important also. You said he has to prove something in this FIBA courts, like with the different rules now, like coming back again about different basketball there, different basketball here. I think we can be united, united towards, you know, one direction, like at least on the professional level, let's say the NBA, the FIBA and EuroLeague to have the same. I understand the NCAA that they have those rules and probably they're not gonna make any step back of adapting the, 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 the pros uh, rules, but at least over there in a, in, a, in a pro level, we need to at least have the, um, the same rules. So Yanis had proved already what he has to prove. I think it's in, 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 in the situation right now that he's more calm uh, and he's more dedicated on what he can uh, accomplish with the uh, with national team as well. So either uh, doesn't matter. We, we don't know the future either. If I'm going to be the, the head coach or there's going to be another head coach, uh, I wish him he's going to succeed this, what he has as a goal, like to, to help national team to, to, to win and to be healthy. Coach, always a pleasure talking to you. Always uh, so nice having you. Uh, I hope our watchers enjoyed that as well. So good luck uh, tonight and good luck in the future and uh, early Merry Christmas, actually. Yeah, Merry Christmas to everybody. Uh, let's let's hope that we, we leave COVID behind us. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's to you, to your families. Uh, my my wish is to have your loving ones together with you in the table, uh, wherever you are. Merry Christmas. Thank you.